And in in one of the things that I I kind of I I did throughout the book and I didn't have a name for it until the very end after I was pretty much done with the book was I I I thought of this concept um for anyone that takes like martial arts especially judo uh, what you do in judo is you use you try to use the opponent's momentum against them right and so with the with the book I I called it verbal judo where I tried to use the weight and momentum of their words against them, you know, to try and hang them out to dry. Like you said this, I want you, you know, I would show the juxtaposition where they're saying one thing and here's the quote and here's the date in which they said it. And then here's them saying the exact opposite thing nine days later, you know what I mean? And here's the date and here's the quote. So I wanted to, to make sure that I don't have to make a comment about that. I just have to show you, they said one thing and then they said the exact opposite nine days later or whatever, whatever the case may be. So it's using the weight of their own words against them. When David, when, when people go, Oh, the, you think these guys all want to create a world government and you know, that's crazy. You, you, you conspiracy theorists with your ideas about world government. Oh, you think that these guys want to start a new world order. It's like, okay, well, here's the quote from page 405 of David Rockefeller's autobiography, which means he wrote it himself. And in this quote, he says, my family and I have been accused by people of being internationalists and that we're trying to uh, destroy the concept of a nation state and, and build a world government in which you know, only a select group of people control, you know? And well, if these are the charges, then I stand guilty and proud of it. And you go, what you, you, you know, so it's like some of these you have to dig around and find, but if you find them, you can use the weight of their own words against them. You can use, it's like, I'm not saying that, well, I am saying that they want to create a one world government, but in this particular context, it's not my words that are saying it's them. You think that the, well, the new world order, you guys, you crazy new world order people. Okay, well, I can put together a compilation video where I can show George H.W. Bush mentioning the new world order over 200 times in four years on camera in front of audiences. So enough of this, like you guys are making this stuff up. That was kind of the point to the book was that we don't have to make it up. It's there. Why do you, you know? think politicians are so blatant? When they sit, when they make these quotes, they, they, well, for they're very arrogant. Most of them are extremely stupid too. Like they, you think that they're smart. They're they're smart in that they can function in that very thin line of like politics, and they go through the you know, especially in the UK where you guys are, they go through Eton and the, you know they go through the school system, the the very specific school system, and within that very narrow framework. They can do quite a few things, but they don't think for themselves. That's the problem with them is that the reason when, when you start to get them in trouble is when they think that they're going to start thinking for themselves and start talking. And when they talk, they get off script. And when they get off script, they make mistakes. And so what I did was I just captured all of the mistakes that they made. And on top of that, they're compromised. But a lot of them are very much compromised. Some of them you don't need to compromise. They love that lifestyle. That's what they're into. Others, you you put them in situations in which they're tested. Their will is tested. If it's, you know, I mean, if it's money and power you want, you give them money and power. If it's uh, drugs and alcohol that they're into, you give them that. If it's, you know, hot women, you make sure that that happens. If it's sex with little kids, you make sure that, but whatever it is that they want, whatever it is that gets that politician interested, uh, then you give it to them and you with, and then you hold it over their heads and you make them do what you need them to do. And the consequences aren't like, we'll stop giving it to you anymore. The consequences can be, we blow up your airplane. So get on board with the program or have a nice trip, you know, and I can name, I mean, I can go through countless examples where guy got on the wrong side of the Clintons and the Clintons put him on an airplane and the airplane blew up. 
a, a guy that worked for the Clintons, you know, got multiple guys that have worked for the Clintons. They've Ron Brown in Croatia. Ron, oh, I'm going to send the Commerce Secretary to Croatia to go sort something out. What did you sort? What What did you need him to sort out? Well, I needed his airplane to fly into a mountain so that he would stop talking. When they found Ron Brown's body, the Commerce Secretary from the Clintons, he died in a plane crash. When they found his actual body, it had a bullet hole in the back of the head. Oh, just to make sure. Oh. So, so, so that's you know what we're talking about. The politicians are. They're defective people to begin with. That's sort of the, 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 the baseline is that we make this assumption that like, we're good people, right? We're, we're decent people. We, we want what's best for our friends and family and everything. And, and, and so we think that the politicians want the same thing, but in actuality, what winds up happening is that places like Washington, DC, uh, they're a magnet for psychopaths and narcissists and people that are really screwed up in the head because there's a lot of power and money in those in, in a place like Washington DC. So if you're a psychopath, one of the things that you're 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 constantly trying to do is move up this pyramid in your mind. You're trying to move up ranks, you're trying to get more control, get this, get that, the things that you want. Well, Washington DC's got all of it. Right. So what winds up happening is it's not like an honest representation of the people that go into politics in America are just normal Americans. They're not. The people that go into politics in America are psychopaths that are seeking something. So they wind up in Washington, D.C. and people go, God, I can't believe these politicians are so dirty and corrupt and they're so full of lies and they're they're sexual deviants and drug addicts or anything. It's like, what did you expect? That's what you get when you 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 put out all the things that psychopaths like. Of course, you're going to get psychopaths. And so, the the but 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 again, what the the problem is that the the mainstream, the general public sees these politicians, and we make this assumption: oh, they must be really good at their job in order to continue to move up. And in fact, it's the opposite of that right it's they're really bad human beings that are controllable they're bad at their job actually but they're controllable and we need them when we put them in a position like president of the united states like bill clinton I, we can't have him thinking for himself you've got to have a guy in there who's controllable uh, maybe Bill Clinton's a bad example because he's a psychopath. No matter what, he would have. They didn't need to control him. He was out. Actually, he was out of control. <laughs> they were trying. They were trying to keep him a little bit more contained in in that. Most people they're trying to destroy Bill Clinton. They're trying to rein in because he was such a maniac. But uh, but but a lot of these people they get into these positions of power and it's like you work for us now. Like you, you don't have a say in how this goes. You don't, you know, so it's not the best and brightest. It's the most controllable and dumbest and, 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 and most ambitious that people that wind up in these positions of power. So they all start to kind of look the same and sound the same. They go to the same schools. They, they hang out with the same people. They're completely detached from like a normal person. Like they have no idea how, you know, they would ask presidents, like how much is a gallon of milk? They'd be like, a dollar? It'd be like, no, it's five dollars. Or when it's five dollars, or when it's eight dollars, they'd ask them, and they they'd say, I don't know, thirty dollars. Like they don't know anything. They 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 know nothing. So it's it's this the the politicians that wind up in in positions of power, and it's only relative power because there's a plenty of people above them. But those politicians that we see on TV that we think have power. Yeah, it's only limited power, but they only keep that power as long as they are doing what needs to be done. The minute you get on the other side of them or you start to become, they view you as unpopular. They don't care if you've been in office for uh, 10 years or 10 weeks. You saw what they did to Liz Trust. They threw her right out, right? She's gone. Like, oh, well, that was fast. Yeah. Because they don't, because the person is replaceable. And it's the octopus that's behind it that continues on. These politicians are just the, just like, they're like actors. They're really like actors. I mean, they, they, the problem.